Hello students, welcome to the lecture on product strategy and after this lecture we will be able to learn the following objectives. Understand the market penetration strategies, describe life cycles of product management, discuss the increasing profitability, explain the decreasing inputs and increasing output, define the choice of customer targets. Let's start with the introduction. Product is the catalyst for the start of a business and the development of product strategy. One of the most important decisions a marketer will make since product plays a crucial role in demand, competitiveness and success. Manager must understand the ramification of the product strategy on other areas of marketing like price, distribution and promotion. Product strategy is perhaps the most important function of a company. It must take into account the capabilities in terms of engineering or production of distribution sales existing in the company or of time to acquire them by hiring or by merger. Why is the product strategy important? The product strategy forms a basic for executing a product roadmap and subsequent product releases. The product strategy enables a company to focus on a specific target market and feature set instead of trying to be everything to everyone. Hello everyone, Jim Glover, that branding guy for Once A Day Marketing, where business takes shape. And just want to remind you that I am your marketing coach, so I hope that you are taking to heart the ideas and inspiration I'm giving you, that you dive in a little bit deeper and make this content work for you. That's my goal. Today it is Strategic Tuesday and today our topic is Product Strategy Meeting Customers Needs. There are many product strategies out there and we're going to be talking about many of those over the course of Once A Day Marketing. But we're going to start out today with the ANSA Product Market Matrix. This is a classic paradigm used by marketers for a long time. So I want you now to think about your business. You've got existing products in an existing market or markets. What we might elaborate on is existing products and new products in existing markets and new markets. And where those intersect in the matrix, you can develop new kinds of strategies. And that's what we're going to be talking about next. And we're going to use the example of a taco stand on the corner as a business that's trying to establish new customers through product strategies. So we'll dive a little bit deeper now into the ANSOF product and market matrix. Let's begin first with market penetration. Now this is where you already have an existing product in an existing market and that's a good thing. Again we've talked about this before. You're familiar with your product and you're familiar with your market. It's going to be easier to communicate and develop a strategy here. So why might you do this? Well you might want to just gobble up a little bit more market share with your competition. That would be a good thing. They're trying to take your market away from you. You try to take it back. So that's a very good thing. Um, it helps you grow your market share in essence. Now let's take a look at our little taco stand guy. He's been selling the same tacos on the same corner for a long, long time. So how does he have a market penetration stat strategy? Well, he might begin by just staying open late. Okay, It may be that customers were coming home, have a hankering for his taco, and he wasn't open. By staying open late, all of a sudden, those people that might have gone to the other taco stand that is open late now come to him. So he's penetrating the market by just that one simple strategy. Now, another intersection of the matrix is market development. And that's where you have an existing product and you're trying to tap into new markets. Now you might use pricing strategies, promotion strategies, might bring on new people, might have new distribution strategies where you are actually trying to target your customers in whole new places, might revamp your whole look of your business, might revamp the whole process of your business. Today we're going to talk a little bit about the taco stand in its market development. Now, let's just say they're on the corner and they have a certain flow of business every day selling their tacos and the owner sees all these high school kids going by so he finally decides to create some sort of promotion to attract one high school kid over to the stand and offers that high school kid a taco well the high school kid loves it he's hungry after school maybe just finished sports so what does that high school student do he goes and tells a friend 
and that friend comes, and then another friend comes, and another friend comes. Before you know it, every afternoon, our little taco stand has created a whole new market for high school students, and that's good development strategy. Next is product development. Now that means you have an existing market, but now you're trying to push more product into that market. So what might you do? Well, let's take a look again at our taco stand guy. He's a taco stand. What if he was to introduce burritos? Now all of a sudden people are thinking of him, oh wow, we already know that business. He's now offering burritos. Last night I had a taco. Tonight I want a burrito. So he in fact is increasing his his business by increasing product development. And that's another strategy you want to look at no matter what kind of business you have. The last intersection of the ANSOF product market matrix is what's called diversification. And that's where you're going to create new products for new markets. And this is the riskiest of all ventures because you're not quite sure, you don't have the familiarity with the success of that product or the success of that market. But it can pay off. Let's take a look again at our taco stand. Let's say our owner decides that he is going to launch with burritos and thinks that China is a great market. I don't know why China, but maybe people in China would love to have a burrito from Santa Fe. So he figures out a means to package up those burritos and ship them off to China. Okay, so new product, new markets. Don't know what the results might be, but at least he's taken a risk on a new challenge or new venture like China. So the payoff may or may not be there. You as a business person with all of these strategies, whether it be market penetration, product penetration, diversification, um, or even market development, any of those you need to think about critically as you move forward to find out what's going to work best for your business. Let us now discuss market penetration strategies. A market penetration strategy seeks to increase market share of the current product or services in the existing market. This strategy adopted by the firms to raise their sales revenue without making changes in the products or services. The other dimension of market penetration is the existing market which means firm already offering products or services to customer but can forecast that the existing sales figures can be improved by working on marketing penetration strategy. Market penetration strategy can be implemented by offering sales, increasing sales force, increased distribution and promotion of products, or expenditure in marketing and advertising activities will result in increasing sales. Penetration pricing is a marketing strategy used by firms to attract customers to a new product or service. Penetration pricing is the practice of offering a low price for a new product or service during its initial offering in order to attract customers away from competitors. The reasoning behind this marketing strategy is that customers will buy and become aware of the new product due to its lower price in the marketplace relative to rivals. Penetration pricing can be a successful marketing strategy when applied correctly. It can often increase both market share and sales volume. Additionally, the high sales volume can also lead to lower production costs and higher inventory turnover, both of which are positive for any firm with fixed overhead. The chief disadvantage, however, is that the increase in sales volume may not necessarily lead to a profit if prices are kept too low. As well, if the price is only an introductory campaign, customers may leave the brand once prices begin to rise to levels more in line with rivals. Example of Penetration Strategies Market penetration, sometimes referred to as a market share, is a measure of the percentage of sales volume an existing product or business achieves in relation to the competition. A product that earns INR 1500 out of every INR 5000 of sales of all product sales in its category has a 2% penetration rate or share. To increase market penetration, a business can employ a number of strategies in an effort to take sales from its competitors. Price adjustment. One common market penetration strategy is to make price adjustment. By lowering prices, the business hopes to generate more sales volume by increasing the number of units purchased and to make prices more appealing to consumers when compared to the competition. Increased promotion. A promotion is often linked with pricing such as advertising a special sale price for a limited period. 
A competitor may counter a successful promotion with one of its own in an attempt to regain lost market share. More distribution channels. A company can attempt to increase market penetration by increasing the methods it uses to get products into the hands of consumer, making them more readily available. Product improvements. Making product improvement can be used to create new interest in a stagnating product or to offer an extra benefit when using it. Consumer products manufacturer have often used the new and improved claim to antis customers to give a product another chance or to improve the perception of quality. Disadvantages of the market penetration strategy. Market penetration strategy uses low prices to generate demand for a product and increase market share. Aren't met production cost. If products are expensive to create, attempting to have the lowest prices may not lead to a significant profit. Smaller companies in particular often have trouble producing enough to adequately lower the production cost per volume, especially when competing with large companies. Missed opportunities. A company that produces a luxury product misses opportunities if it markets the item as a cheap product. Consumer who desire luxury items will avoid the product. Poor company image. Similarly, if a company has other product lines that sell luxury products, it may want to avoid the market penetration strategy. Using the market penetration strategy with one product may hurt sales in the other product lines. Lowering industry prices. Market penetration strategy can cause prices to lower throughout the entire industry. Competitors often try to match prices, particularly if their products are similar lack of results. In other cases, market penetration strategy has little or no effect. If one company enters an industry in which prices are already low, setting the lowest price is usually unrealistic. Saturated market. Market penetration strategy can work with products people must replace frequently such as foods and hygiene products. With other products, the market would quickly become saturated. How to develop market penetration? Developing product or service and increasing sales typically involves a market penetration. Market penetration refers to the successful selling of a product or service in a specific market. Step 1. Negotiate with a wholesaler to boost market penetration. Partner with product distributors to increase marketing efforts and increase customer awareness of product or brands. Offer wholesalers a higher cut or commission on products in lieu of the company promoting or advertising product. Step 2. Develop own marketing campaign to increase the number of customer and penetrate the market. Research the competition to familiarize their self with their offers and prices. Go online to research their current offers or read through print circulations to search for deals. Customers are often attracted to the company that offers the lowest prices. Create coupons or special offers to lure new business such as coupons that offer lower prices, a two for one special or take a percentage of a customer's purchase. Step 3. Group Products Group products together to draw attention to a lesser known product. Some customer may hesitate to experiment with a new product. Bundle products and sell an unknown or unpopular item with a well-liked product. Customer may use and like the lesser known product and begin purchasing the product from company. Step 4. Highlighting other product feature. Expand customer base by promoting multiple uses for a single product. Step 5. Buy out the competition. If we have the capital, purchase an existing company and become the only supplier for a specific product or service. Let us now discuss the life cycles of product management. There are two important life cycles of product management. They are product life cycle and customer life cycle. Product life cycle, PLC sales. The product mix of most companies contains well-established products, newly launched products and candidates for deletion. New products face an uncertain life. Consumer acceptance may be below expectation and commercial debt may be premature. On the other hand, management hopes that each new product will lead a long profitable life. The concept of the product life cycle PLC has been devised to describe what happens during the market life of a product from its introduction to its withdrawal. PLC variation. Researchers have discovered up to 17 variants. However, there are two major variations. The fat product life cycle, F 
EPLC, the extended product life cycle EPLC. Most fats appear to have these characteristics in common. Fats are often accompanied by a lot of pre-launch publicity. For this reason, there is no identifiable slow introductory sales stage in the cycle. Fats are normally adopted only by a very delimited market, frequently identifiable as a specific age group. Most fats are items which are consumed visibly. Conspicuous consumption enables the consumer to identify himself with significant others. A product which is consumed privately cannot offer this benefit. There are a number of products which exhibit the EPLC sales pattern. Stable products. Demand for a number of stable classes of products follows this pattern. Fashion or style classes, functional products, multiple use products, cultural necessities, relaunch or remarketed products. Julie, today I will overview an important marketing concept with you called the product life cycle which describes the stages in the sales history of a product or service. Thanks teacher, what are the key characteristics of the product life cycle? Well Julie, the key characteristics are that firstly, a product has a limited life. Secondly, a product sales history follows an S-curve until sales eventually decline. Thirdly, the inflection points in the sales history locate the stages known as introduction, growth, maturity and decline. Fourthly, the life of a product may be extended. And fifth point, the average profit per unit of the industry rises and falls over the life cycle. What are the marketing challenges for each stage of the product life cycle? Each stage has its challenges. For example, the introductory stage requires the marketer to create awareness and acceptance by opinion leaders within the early adopter group. The growth stage challenge is to maintain supply and quality consistency while establishing brand identification and market position. At the mature stage a firm needs to maintain and improve its profit, defend its position and look for growth segments of the market. In decline, cost reduction, pricing and targeting is important to profitability, and planning is required to determine exit timing. Teacher, what are the strategic implications of the product life cycle theory? Well Julie, the strategic implication of the product life cycle theory requires that each stage warrants different objectives, marketing mix, strategies and a different management focus. Both Watson and Day, two noted academics have conducted extensive research on the product life cycle and have concluded that an intermediate stage between growth and maturity is required, which they call competitive turbulence. This recognizes the implications and effects of a slowdown in market growth and oversupply. Brought on by the entry of new competitors and the increase in capacity of existing ones. For example Apple's iPod it has gone from growth and is now entering maturity. Apple's iPhone has skipped the introductory stage and has been in growth from the outset. The product life cycle will vary by product and industry. Thanks teacher for explaining this important market concept to me. Customer life cycle. Just as products have life cycle, customers also have a life cycle. In its most simple forms, a customer life cycle consists of two phases. Customer buys a product, customer uses a product. Product upgrade. When a customer is finished using a product, the things can happen. The customer can be upgraded to a follow-on product that meets their needs are deprovisioned the product upgrade pad is desirable because it keeps a customer and reduces customer reacquisition cost. Deprovisioning. Deprovisioning a customer may seem like an issue that need not be dealt with. The customer stops using the product and nothing more need to be done. Something is wrong. You've got everything you thought you needed for your marketing plan. You've got advertisements, a kick-ass website, and email templates. You've got systems for customer service and payment processing. You've got your distribution system absolutely locked down. Why aren't you making half the sales you thought you'd be? There's a problem somewhere, but how can you figure out what it is? Customers and your relationship with them have life cycles. The customer life cycle starts with acquisition when they first become a customer, goes on to service, where you're able to sell them your product, and retention, where they keep coming back to you for your product or services. You can track where your customers are in the life cycle by using the chain of conversion. 
A percentage of strangers, unique visitors, become leads, which means they might be interested. A percentage of leads become prospects, showing a definite interest in your product. Prospects receive the presentation, in some cases, a personal direct sales pitch. A percentage of people receiving the presentation become customers, they bought it. A percentage of customers become repeat customers, they bought it again or bought something else from you. Every sale you make will have gone through this process, and if there aren't enough sales being made, then one of the links of the chain is broken or not working properly. Assuming that you have a good lead generation system, the best way to fix the problem is to start at the end and work backwards. If you aren't getting any leads at all, meaning that nobody knows about your business and nobody is visiting your website, then you'll want to start at the beginning and work forwards. You'll need data to accomplish this. You have to always be tracking where people are in the chain of conversion and how many are going from one link to the next. Here's an example. You're making five sales a week. You get those five sales by making 25 presentations. You had 200 prospects who might have been interested and those prospects came out of a pool of 500 leads. The leads all started out as one of the thousand people who encountered some of your advertising or your website. So where is the problem? Well, 5 sales for every 25 presentations is a 20% conversion rate. 25 presentations for every 200 prospects is a 12.5 conversion rate. 200 prospects for every 500 leads is a 40% conversion rate. And 500 leads for every 1,000 strangers is a 50% conversion rate. Where can you improve? Looking at your business model, you decide that you can make more presentations to your prospects and make them better if you had another salesperson on your team. Or, maybe if you fine-tune the presentation itself and retrained your existing sales staff, you can convert more presentations into sales. You want to go with what's going to give you the most benefit for the least effort. That is to say, pick the low-hanging fruit. If you can get a good improvement from a small change, it may be a better idea to do that than to work long and hard on a big change with an equal or only slightly better result. Use your resources wisely. Once you know where your weaknesses are, you can start improving them. Say you have a weak conversion rate between strangers and leads. You might need to generate more traffic or provide a better incentive like a free report for a person to become a lead. You see that having sales data is important at every step of the chain of conversion. But even if you don't have it yet, you can still use this process by working backwards from sale to stranger to see what part of the process needs fine-tuning. Let us now discuss increasing profitability. Market penetration is a growth strategy that involves selling more of current products or services to current target market, understanding risk and growth. When most business owners consider how to grow, they tend to think of new products to launch. This can be risky. For example, selling new products often involves a learning curve as companies become familiar with selling and servicing a new technology. In other cases, we may need to procure, store or distribute these new products differently than with current product line. If selling services, it may find that subtleties in the service delivery process or customer expectation will make or break success with this expansion. Understand the value of incremental sales of businesses grow in stages. Overhead is often increased with the expectation for future growth. As a result, most businesses have unused production capacity. Any incremental sales will result in only the variable cost of one more unit produced. Therefore, a minor increase in volume provides considerable contribution margin and dramatically impacts the profitability of company. Increasing usage. As an alternative to increasing market share, a company can use a market penetration strategy by increasing product usage. Small changes to the business will often directly increase the volume or frequency with which customer use a company's product and services. Creating barriers to entry. It is crucial to understand how to leverage company's strength when considering strategic option. For example, Operating with the lowest variable cost in the industry is a strength that can be leveraged to help ramp up sales while establishing a barrier to entry. Do something different. Although marketing penetration involves selling existing product or service to existing customer, still to need to do something different. Business as usual will result in the same result as it had in the past. Growth will occur when alter the strategy. 
Let us now discuss about decreasing inputs and increasing outputs. The determinants of supply are technology, input prices and number of suppliers, expectation and changes in prices of other products. Technology allows firms to produce more at the same or at a lower cost. This decreases the marginal cost of a firm and increases the market supply. Input prices are the cost of the factors needed to produce the good. Labor materials, rent costs are all input prices. If input prices increase, supply will decrease because it is more costly for a given firm to supply the same amount of goods. Increasing returns to product. Increasing returns to product is closely associated with economies of product. Increasing returns to product occurs when a firm increases in inputs and a more than proportionate increase in production results. Decreasing returns to product. Decreasing returns to product is closely associated with diseconomies of product, the upward part of the long run average total curve. Decreasing returns to product happen when the firm's output rises proportionately less than its input price. Constant returns to product. Constant returns to product occur when the firm's output rises proportionate to the increase in inputs. Problem, in the example, after doubling the inputs in year 1, what would output have to be in year 2 for the firm to experience constant returns to product? Solution, 2000 products. At 2000 products, the output doubles. Because the inputs double, the increase in production is proportionate. By definition, this equates to constant returns to product. The choices of customer targets are defining the target customer organization exists for one purpose to meet human needs. Thriving organization do that exceedingly well. Venerated organization have managed to meet evolving human needs over a long period of time. All of an organization's revenues and profits result from one thing customer who are willing to pay money for products and services that meet their needs. How to target perfect customer? Targeting customer in depth is vital to the success of organization. It is not only an important component of targeting and qualifying the best prospect for offer, but also an effective way to discover new ideas, different angles, captivating storylines, unsought benefits, and appropriate length and language of copy that will convert more. If they have done enough research to know product is viable, then targeting and connecting with market as much as possible should be the obvious next step. However, this is where many marketers fail for they are trying to be all things to all people and attempt to market their product to everyone. Instead, try to discover the qualities, characteristics and behavior patterns of specific market. Then market to that audience more than any other and as often as possible. These usually fall into these main categories. Aim for the bull's eye. Nevertheless, Arm oneself with as much of this type of information beforehand and chances of achieving greater success with product will be virtually guaranteed. While it cannot be everything to everyone, it should not be targeting everyone for everything. Applying the targeting model is simple. Each circle represents a different level in the targeting process, the center being the first and so on. As the at age goes, fish where the fish swim, find places. The bull's eye, the center, which is things that directly and specifically involve perfect customer, should be main aim at all times. The second level is things that are related to them. The third level, while not related, is things that are oriented towards perfect customer. Here is a real life example. Let us say we are in the computer scale business. Perfect customer is a person aged between 20 and 35, earning around 45,000, living in the southern part of the India and working in the high tech field. The center or bull's eye would include computer related magazine, shows, website, trade shows, e-zine and directories among other types of media wherever perfect customer is targeted based on the qualities and characteristic of product or customer should be first goal. The second tire is areas that are directly related to perfect customer. Goal would then be to target markets that are similar to own or somehow logically fit into target market as well in short other related publication, businesses or areas that target perfect customer too. Areas include software magazine, trade publication, technology website, industry association, non-competing business, etc. An example would be other websites selling computer peripherals or somewhere perfect customer would need or enjoy such as an accounting software package. 
The third and final tire consists of totally unrelated areas, perfect customer frequency, without anything to do with industry. Through some research, it has found that a large percentage of target market is coffee drinkers. Then areas would seek are, for example, coffee-related website, specialty coffee magazine, coffee product store, example, coffee maker companies, mugs, espresso machines, etc., restaurants, books on coffee, and so on. It means that as long as the audiences of such website and publication logically fit into target market somehow, even if, in this case, they have nothing to do with computers at all and then have got it made. In a sense, it is still within bull's eye, in other words. The bottom line is, in order to convert at a much higher rate, we need to be in front of the right people as often as possible. Now in the end, let us summarize what we have learned in this lecture. Product is the catalyst for the start of a business and the development of product strategy, one of the most important decisions a marketer will make since product plays a crucial role in demand, competitiveness and success. A market penetration strategy seeks to increase market share of the current product or services in the existing market. As demand for a product rises, the company in turn saves on production costs per unit by producing a greater volume of the product. The determinants of supply are technology, input prices and number of suppliers, expectation and changes in prices of other products. Market penetration is a growth strategy that involves selling more of current products or services to current target market.